Hello, my friend. Welcome to live chats. <laughs> I'm really excited for today's chat. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be very product focused, very makeup and skincare focused, and a lot of fun because the the joy that I've, I've said this multiple times, the joy of the live chats here on this channel is that it's not just about my opinion. It's about everybody that's here live and everybody watching after on the replay, leaving comments and working together as one giant brain in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap. I thought it would be fun to kind of just go through some, through some brands and just kind of say, okay, what is a product that they just did really, really bad? Like really bad. Like, like I don't know what they were thinking. It was so bad. And then maybe even talk about some things that they just nailed. They did so, so well that it's something that we will use over and over again or something that we use all the time uh, and just kind of highlight some of those things and just help each other uh, and have a conversation and maybe reminisce about some products that are no longer available. Uh, just, you know, kind of talk about our shared experiences with different products. I thought it would be a lot of fun. So that's what we're going to be doing today. But before we do that, I, when I welcome people into my home, I do like to say hello very quickly. So I'm going to say hello to the people that are here live in the collective brain. First of all, hello to my friend, Teresa M.O. So good to see you. Thank you for being here. And thank you to all of the moderators for being here. You all are amazing. I appreciate you so much. Good morning to Vicky. Good morning to Jess. Jess reminding everyone to like and share the video and spread the love. Thank you, Jess. Good morning, Mel. Good morning, Yasu Cherry from France. Good morning, Diana. She said, why did last week feel like a month long? <laughs> Was it a long week for you? Last week went by pretty fast for me. I have some, uh, some Marco Polos that just like, it's like every day I was like, I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll get to it tomorrow. If you don't know Marco Polo, it's like a chatting, a video chatting app. I have just have friends that are like, I want to answer what they were saying. And I just, it's been like just such a busy week this week. Hello to Carrie now. So good to see you. Good to see you, Cricket. Morning to everyone. I just moved yesterday, so it's nice to have something familiar to listen to while everything else is on its head. Oh my gosh, moving is so incredibly stressful and having everything in boxes and it's like just the whole thing. And where did I put the thing that I need? Which box did I put it in? And oh, good morning, Sarojan and Alicia. So good to see you all. And Jean, Jean I'm sorry, Gina. Thank you. Why is that hard for me? You have it spelled out. Liz, good morning to you and Angie. And if I did not say good morning to you, good morning to you. Thank you so much for being here. And Angie reminding everybody to please hit the like button. Only takes a second for you and really does help me out a lot. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's go ahead and just start talking about some brands. And what I did today is I actually have a pencil and paper. And when I see you all commenting brands that we want to talk on, I'm going to jot some down as we're talking. So I don't forget to talk about some of the brands that you all mentioned, but I thought we would talk first about, um, I don't know who should we talk about first? I don't know. I had a couple things in my head. I'm thinking benefit is an easy one for me at least, because I feel like Benefit is one of those brands that they do things either really, really well, or they just completely miss the mark completely. Okay. I wish I had pictures of these products, but these are things that you can probably look up if you have not seen them. Um, but I feel like, let me see. Okay. I'm writing things down. Um, yeah, Becca, we'll talk about Becca. We'll talk about Urban Decay. <laughs> um, Tarte. Okay. So what I was thinking right away was the benefit, the their real liner that had the rubber tip where you like turned it up and a little bit of product came out. And then the first time I used it, I actually think I have a review on the channel of it. Th there was a rubber tip that was pointed. So the idea was a product would come out and then the rubber tip would help it spread evenly over your eye. But the problem was is that the product dried up inside the tip. So when you went to go use it another time, it just didn't work. <laughs> it was like, how did you not test this ahead of time and realize it didn't work. And then the other issue that I had with it was that it bent. So the more you used it, the, the rubber tip kind of started to like lose its excitement for being on your eye and just started like, <laughs> it was 
looked so bad. It was like the worst eyeliner ever. Like besides the roller liners, the pizza wheel liners. Did they have one of those too? I feel like they might have had one of those too. The ones that had a little pizza wheel. Those things were so not functional. Like if you're going over a piece of paper or a pizza, yeah, roller liners, like the little wheel. Mac had one, I know. Like that would be fine. But the problem is, is that this is not flat. And for some of us, it's not taut anymore either. So we just go tick, 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 across and it was just, it was horrible. And it was real liquidy. All of them were like so liquidy and it was like a thing for a while. Oh, I just remembered another thing. Okay. All right. Get a little ASMR if you can hear my, <laughs> if you can hear my pencil going. So let's see. Um, <laughs> yes, that is what she said. That is what she said. Yeah, totally gimmicky, Mrs. Unnecessary. Totally. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Jess says Sephora testers help me avoid that benefit eyeliner hell. Yeah. It was just not good. It was not good at all. You guys have so many good brands I want to talk about. Um, here we go. A Matt Hatter says, OMG, I was working at Sephora when that Benefit Eyeliner came out. Trying to sell that was hell. They were like trying to make you sell it. Oh my gosh. See, I could never work at a place where I had to sell things like that. Like I couldn't. I couldn't do it. There's no way. There's just no way I could have like actually looked at somebody in the eye and tried to like tell them, hey, try this new mascara, uh, this new eyeliner. I probably would have done it like and been like, hey, we have this new eyeliner for benefit. Do you want to try it? And then like kind of like talk to them about <laughs> like as they're doing it. See how it bent. The no, I guess there's no real way to do it while you're like, while it's fresh, because it really had a problem like the second time you used it. But I guess if it's a tester, it's been open for a while. So if it's not like coming off, oh, it's awful. It was awful. But one thing I do think Benefit does really, really, really well, of course, is their brow products. I have loved so many Benefit brow products from their brow gel to like their really sharp eyeliner to the one that was like the little three little it was like a liquid and it had like the little three prongs on it that one's really nice for a nice light brow um really love benefit brow products um so yeah that's kind of what i have to say <laughs> yeah oh, i already i think i i already got that one let me scroll down let's see yeah, Lori says, Lisa, I'm sorry, Lisa. I used to uh, work at, at next to a benefit counter and they really did struggle with that offer liner. I can imagine them just cursing benefit, like curse you benefit for coming out with this liner. Just like, oh, it was awful. Yes, this too, Denise. I just like the Benefit cheek tint. I think that's why I haven't tried any other liquid blushers. Okay, liquid blushes come so far. The Benetint, which was like a clear red jelly that you would put on and it dried so fast and stained so fast. I really like that for a lip tint if you like that shade because it really did stay nicely. But on the cheeks, it was just very difficult to work with. Like you could work with it, like you could make it work, but I felt like it dried so fast and stained so much that it was like, if you got on too much, it's like you're ending up putting, you know, maybe a little bit of foundation over top of it or powder over top of it to kind of get rid of some of the brightness of it. Uh, unless you like really, well, see, even if you have a deeper skin tone or someone that needs more pigmentation for whatever reason, maybe that's just, you know, something that you like, it was difficult to blend out because it dried so fast. It looked patchy almost, like a clumpy. Like, but liquid blushes have come so far. I highly recommend. I'm actually wearing a liquid blush today. We're going to talk about it in a bit. I, we've talked about it a couple of times, but it is a drugstore brand. Liquid blush, we'll talk about that um, when we get to the middle point. All right, I need to keep going or else I'm never going to get through all these fun brands to talk about. <gasps> this is so fun. Okay. So one thing I wanted to talk about, which isn't a brand that came to my mind as we were talking about this, is those silicone beauty sponges. Like, I wish I could insert pictures for you. Like the clear silicone beauty sponges that everybody was selling for a while, even though no one could get them to work. It was like, all it did was, it was like a flat, clear, like 
teardrop shape. And all I did was mush the foundation around so it like streaked all over your face. <laughs> the idea was is it wasn't supposed to absorb foundation. So that's cool, but at the same time, it didn't blend it either. <laughs> it just kind of like smeared it everywhere like fingers were better. Fingertips were way better than using one of those silicone sponges. Those things were awful. So, so bad. I think pretty much like so many brands came out with those, I guess, because they were on um, the Scylla sponge. Yes. Yes. Deanna, it was called the Scylla sponge, but so many brands came out with them. Ooh, sorry. I hit my ring against the table. So many brands came out with those dumb things. Like, I guess because they were selling and they were so cheap and it was, they were so awful. They were so awful. Oh my gosh, new members. Yay. Heidi, thank you so much. And also to Dustin, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I missed, I missed where it was announced. Oh, here we go. Here's Heidi. Thank you, Heidi. And where's Dustin? Where did it go? Where is it? It's not showing up. You know what John and I realized is it doesn't always show up the people when they're, oh, here you are, Dustin. Thank you so much, Dustin. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, totally. Becca, I bought one of the silicone sponges. I feel so dumb in retrospect. I bought one too. We can be dumb together. It's okay. We, there are so many of us that did that because it just seemed like a good idea at the time, you know, and they kept telling us that they worked. Oh, here we go. Angeline says, I love to use it for moisturizer. It keeps it cleaner than using dirty fingers. Very interesting. Great to know. Great to know. Yeah, they were terrible. They were awful. Um, okay. So let's talk about tart. Let's talk about tart for a bit. Okay. So we're all going to have different opinions on tart. All right. I feel like, okay, so with tart, I originally really liked the, um, the concealer. I, I originally liked it. I liked it a lot. And then I realized how much it was seeping into my fine lines, the shape tape. But I was obsessed just like everybody else. And I honestly think that was beauty guru driven success of that concealer. <laughs> I think I was influenced by people that were better than me at makeup, loving it so much. And I was like, maybe there's something that I'm missing here. Maybe I'm just not doing it right because when they use it, it looks beautiful. But this is why like, I personally like watching non-professionals do makeup because like as far as product reviews, because I feel like some people are so good at makeup, they can make anything work. And that's not me. So like I need somebody that maybe isn't as skilled so that I can see whether they struggle with it. And if they struggle with it, then I'm probably going to struggle with it. But like a Manny MUA, like I love his reviews, but he is like, I feel like he could pretty much make anything work, even though he does, he does critique products and say when they don't blend as much now thinking about it, but like he is so talented, you know, just as an example. Thank you, Andrea. I appreciate you. Yes. Christine, oh, Tart, I have such a love-hate relationship with you. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yes, Steph, shape tape, totally. Yes, and then D, same thing, shape tape. Everybody's saying shape tape. Yeah, I bought shape tape for the first time. I, I find it has a weird smell, though. Let me see if mine has a weird smell. Hold on. I've had mine for a minute, though. Has anybody tried the new creamy one? I have not. Yeah, it does. Well, it's not bad though. It's like makeup and like clean. It's like a fresh, clean makeup scent. Mine's kind of old though, but it doesn't, I don't think it smells bad. At least mine doesn't. Yeah, there we go. Lori says, I still love shape tape. It just takes some working with it. And I think so too. I think that the way that I've found to use my shape tape is if I do want more coverage under my eyes, I just have to make sure I take a wet beauty blender and tap it out afterward. And I feel like that it's better that way, but it's too, for the, there's so many better concealers. Like I would rather buy, you know, the ColourPop one is really good. The e.l.f. Creamy concealer is really good. Those are the ones I would rather buy. And they're so much cheaper. I feel like with drugstore products, a lot of times they're, um, you know, they've, they've really stepped up their game, some of these brands and you don't need to buy the expensive stuff anymore because the drugstore stuff is just so much better. Yeah. You know what, Lauren, I've heard the Tartlet and Bloom is fantastic. That is one of the ones I never got. I hated the original Tartlet palette. I did not like it. That one. And then I got another one and I did not like it at all. It was just, it did not blend, but I heard the Tartlet and Bloom was the best one. And of course, that's the one I don't have. Of course.
Oh, this is interesting. Chelsea says, if something is ever too thick, you can always add moisturizer, just a teeny bit to shear it out and make it workable. That is so smart. Thank you, Chelsea, for that. Collective Brain Unite. Jenna says the Tarte lip liner that she got was crusty. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Darky Doom says, I honestly find no concealer to be best for me, but ColourPop has been working great for me if I do want to use one nice. Yeah. Angela, the trick to shape tape is a little goes a long way. Oh, totally. Totally. All right. So things that I like from Tarte. Lights, camera, lashes, mascara. I love the lights, camera, lashes, mascara. And I'm picky about my mascaras. I really like that one a lot. Yes, totally. Makeup says Tarte H2O lip glosses are lovely. I've never tried those. Anna says, I love the Tarte cheek stains, but they're discontinued. The only blush you wore. Oh, that's a bummer. All right. Stila. Okay, so Stila. I fell in love with Stila. If you, God, some people, may, if you're new to make, you may not even know Stila because Stila just seems to have like disappeared into the ether. So Stila, I fell in love with them with, they had a eyes or the window palettes. And there was one that had like their favorites in it. it, had Kitten and a bunch of other ones that I really, really liked. And I love that palette. But then I made the mistake of going to uh, TJ Maxx, then TJ Maxx, um, Nordstrom Rack and buying one of their like holiday pouch or something. Oh my gosh, was it awful. It was like bad, bad, bad drugstore quality. Like when you think of a bad drugstore eyeshadow as opposed to a good, it was powdery. It did not, I was so upset. I was like, I did not realize it was more than one eyeshadow. That was the first time I learned that brands can do two different eyeshadow formulas. That one can be really good and then you buy something else and then it is atrocious. It was like, what happened? And I was like burnt on Stila after that. After that, I was like, I don't know if I trust you anymore. Like I felt, I really felt like a bad relationship. Like, wait a minute. I thought you were supposed to be this and you're telling me you're this like, how do I know when you're going to be good and when you're not going to be good? But then, but then they came out with the liquid eyeshadows. And I really, really like those a lot. Um, the, what you call it, the glowy liquid eyeshadows. They were really the first ones that I know of that really be made liquid eyeshadows popular. And now they're everywhere. And they seem to be coming out, people keep, seem to become, people, brands seem to be coming out with more of the matte ones now, which I personally really like. I think that's a great idea. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh, Joan. Stila liquid lipsticks were the driest, most awful liquid lipsticks, in my opinion. I know some people absolutely love them, but for me, they flaked on me. They were so uncomfortable. They were like thick, uncomfortable, and flaky. Like everything you don't want in a liquid lipstick. I hated those so much. They said they lasted all day. I would imagine for some people maybe, but for me, they flaked for some reason, and I don't know why. Because I know some people really like the Stila liquid lipsticks. Cosmic Slice says, I've never heard any, had anything from Stila. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that haven't had a lot from Stila. Yes. Smishi says, I remember the Stila Eyes to the Window series. I have really been following you that long. It feels like 2014 was 10 years ago. Oh, I know. Like... I was look. What was I looking at? Oh, when when I took my BoxyCharm affiliate link out of my description because they cut off all the affiliate links unless you lived in specific states. Like I never, I never pushed BoxyCharm anyway. But it was just kind of like an end of an era. And I looked back and I was like, oh, well, that makes me kind of sad to like pull my BoxyCharm affiliate link out of the description box. It was in the description box of all my videos, but it doesn't work anymore. So I went back and I watched my first BoxyCharm unboxing. I think from 2013. Oh my gosh, it's like have I really been like years just go by. You know, they really do. They just go by. I was like out on my porch and the kids were playing in the front yard and little John was so tiny. It's like years go by. Years go by. Okay, that was off topic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Haley says the only steel products I've had good luck with are the liquid shadows. Everything else has been a total miss. Yeah. It's so sad. It's so sad. Oh, thank you, Shirley. I appreciate you. Beauty Discovery Channel. So possibly has a YouTube channel, I would imagine. All right, let's move on. 
Okay. Someone said glam light. Now I try not to like really make a big deal over like when indie brands do things that I don't like, but this one I think is important because I had gotten their chocolate, like the, the popsicle, it was like a chocolate popsicle and had lip products in it. And I put, I ended up putting my favorites and fails because I, they were just so bad. They smelled awful. Like they smell rotten. Like I think maybe they had just gone bad or something. And I never contacted the brand. I should have contacted the brand and been like, hey, my liquid lipsticks smell a little off. Like maybe something was wrong with the batch. I don't know. But I want to make sure I tell you that after that, after I bought those, I bought other ones and they did not have a bad smell. So I don't, I think that there was something wrong. Oh, I just saw a brand. But I think there might have been something wrong with, with my particular ones or something because they smelled awful. But I do really, really like the Glam Light eyeshadows. They are like, they remind me a lot of Juvia's Place shadows. So if you like Juvia's Place shadows, you'll probably like Glam Light. I have a feeling it's a similar formula. They blend very similarly. They swatch very similarly. Uh, but with Glam Light, they have the the like it's just a packaging difference really for me between the two brands. I feel like they're they're you know it's whether you want you know the beautiful African theme or you want the food theme. Uh, so and Juvia's Place is much less expensive as well because I do I would imagine Glamlight pays a lot for their packaging. If you've never seen Glamlight like okay like this, I mean for real, it's like squishy. Now this one, they've improved the packaging since this, but this one had, this is old. So this one had some issues. I've showed you this before where the moisture from the shadow seeped into the cardboard. And that's what this is, which is super, super creepy looking. The shadows still work great. Um, I haven't used them in a bit, uh, but they are like, if you see like there's even a fingerprint in this one because they're just so soft. I think there's just too much emollient in these um, and is why they kind of seeped in there. But they're... Um, but they're packed. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh gosh. I'm like knocking into everything. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, their packaging is really beautiful. This is the pie one that I got for Christmas. This one's beautiful. Um, but yeah, they have really nice quality eyeshadows, but the lip, uh, liquid lipsticks and lip glosses were, I could say hit or miss for me. Let's see what y'all are saying. <laughs> Gigi says that is ridiculous. It is ridiculous, but it's fun too. It's fun too. I think it's fun. It is kind of stupid, but it's fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, beautiful liquid. Heidi wants to, this is a, a little bit off topic, but someone please tell me a beautiful liquid lipstick that's really comfortable, please. Um, my favorites that are comfortable. Bare Minerals, their Gen Nude liquid lipsticks are very comfortable, but they're not transfer proof or transfer resistant. They're very creamy. M Cosmetics has a very, very similar formula. I wouldn't be surprised if M Cosmetics used the Bare Minerals as a base for theirs because it is very similar and it smells like chocolate pudding. They're amazing. Um, the Ofra ones, I would say, are next. I do have an affiliation with Ofra. I did collab liquid lipsticks with them, so I just want to make sure I disclose that. Um, but they are, they dry down more. So they're a little less smooshy, uh, but those are very comfortable as well. And if you want ones that dry down all the way that are more comfortable, that aren't uncomfortable, Dose of Colors and uh, Lunar Beauty are my favorites there. Okay, let's talk about... Um, do, 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 do. Okay, let's talk about Smashbox. Oh, wait, I gotta get Heidi's comment off the thing. Hold on. Thanks, Heidi. Okay, Smashbox. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something I like from Smashbox, honestly. Honestly. Like, y'all have to tell me some stuff that you like from Smashbox because I don't think I like anything. There, I have had such bad luck with Smashbox. Like, terrible luck. Terrible. Like their eye. The last thing I bought from Smashbox was eyeshadows, I believe, and it was the like long thin eyeshadow palettes. They were so hard to work with, and it was like the colors had this black base. So when you when you blended out the color, the color disappeared, and all that was left was black. So in the end, it looks like you just got soot all over your eyes because you because at least for me because I wasn't expecting it to turn black, so it was hard to control. 
And the color just wasn't there anymore. Remember, I had a green one and the green did that. And it was like, I want the green. I don't want black. Like that black undertone just killed it for me. It was awful. I'm trying to think of other things I've tried from Smashbox. Y'all have to tell me because I might have just forgotten. Um, Smashbox brushes. I've never used Smashbox brushes. I didn't even know they had brushes. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Afres. Smashbox has the primers and the contour trio. Yes. Um, I tried a Smashbox. I think it was the Casey Holmes highlighter thing. And it was just okay for me. It was fine. Uh, it wasn't bad, but it was like meh. Um, but their primers are nice. That's true. I like their face primers. That's true. Yeah. See, another person, Joey says the Smashbox brushes are great. Hi, Audra. If you don't know my friend Audra at home, go watch her YouTube channel. She's amazing. <laughs> she does not comment for me to say that, by the way. She probably doesn't even like me saying that she's here. So <laughs> she likes nothing from Smashbox. I don't, I don't like things from Smashbox either. I am with you, Audra. Let's see. Yeah, everybody's saying the Smashbox brushes. I don't know anything about that. What am I missing out on? I'm missing some things. Yeah, you know, I missed this. AL says, I feel like Smashbox is only a good product when they collaborated with Vlada. They came out with a really cool collection. Vlada Haggerty, if you're not familiar, oh my gosh. I feel like if Vlada came out now, though, people would be like, meh. Just because there's so many talented people now, like when Vlada came out, it was special. You know, it was the lip art was special. And I feel like now it's like it's so hard for anybody, even someone as talented as Vlada, to like make any kind of mark because there's just so many people that are talented that are just as talented as Vlada. You know, it's kind of it's kind of sad, you know, that there's so many talented people that just get lost. That's why I like doing the artist shout out for What's Up in Makeup because I feel like so many talented people like Vlada, you know, just get lost. All right. So let's talk Becca. Okay, I think y'all are going to know Becca, the one that I'm going to say. Becca, that stupid clear primer or clear foundation. No, no found, whatever, what was it called? The no, the, whatever, the clear foundation in the jar. There was not a primer. It was not a foundation. It was just like jelly that you spread on your, like there was no hydrating properties. It was like uh, nothing. It did nothing. Like you just spread it on and it was like, oh, like it might be blowing my primer. Oh wait, never mind. It's not blowing my pores anymore. <laughs> like, oh, it's blowing pores. Oh, oh no, never mind. <laughs> As soon as it dried down, the pore blurring was gone, and like there were no, there was nothing in it, the ingredient list to make makeup last longer. It didn't make makeup last longer. It wasn't hydrant. It just was nothing. It was just like emollients. Like let's just put a bunch of emollients together and make a product that feels really smooth, that feels kind of nice to put on the face, but does absolutely nothing. And then, of course, for best product, I gotta say the highlighters. The highlighters. I remember I was in a hotel room. Who was I? Oh, no. I was at my friend Nicole's house. Yay or nay, Nicole. If you do not know Nicole's channel, definitely go check it out. She's a good friend of mine. She's amazing. Um, yay or nay, Nicole. I was at her house in California, and I was getting ready in the bathroom, and I had a little mini Becca. What was it? I can't remember what shade it was now, but I dropped it on her floor, and it just went and shattered everywhere. I was like, oh, no. I was so sad. I was so sad. Um, that's my Becca highlighter story. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So many people talk about their under eye corrector being amazing. Yeah. Poor Becca. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like, you know, they tried really hard to, you know, do everything right. You know, like, like they say, you know, you're supposed to have celebrities and influencers, you know, help you grow your brand, all of that. You know, they had Chrissy Teigen, they had a bunch of other people, America Ferreira, you know, they had, you know, People, they hired, you know, famous people <laughs> that should have been able to sell the brand, I guess. But I don't know. They they just didn't. I don't know. What do you think was the downfall of Becca? What do you think it was? Why? Why is my hair? My hair looks so thin today. I'm I'm so sad. Yes, Becca Zero. No pigment foundation. Thank you, Lana. And thank you, Renna. Anytime you can hit that like button if you're enjoying, just if you're enjoying it. If you're not enjoying it, that's okay. But if you are enjoying it, it really does help me when you just click the button. Um yeah, this is interesting. See, I always feel sad when this happens, John. Maybe they tried too hard. 
that always makes me so sad because it's like, what's the line between trying too hard and not trying hard enough? Like, how, how do you navigate that space? I feel like that's so hard. I feel like that's so hard to navigate that space. Yeah, Dara says, I, I say Lauder did them dirty, dirty. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, Trisha says, Becca has been heavy in my local TJ Maxx and Marshall stores lately. Yeah, because they're going out of business. So sad. I mean, I feel like if they had stayed independent, they might have been able to stay in business. But Estee Lauder is trying to, they realize that Becca's not a big money maker and they tried and they tried and they're quitting it, you know, and they're investing in other places. They're investing more in um, Decium, who makes the ordinary and things like that. It's so sad. Yeah. Bad marketing, Francesca says, was one of the downfalls. That That zero, no pigment, that was just, see, the thing is, is it could have been good. It could have been if they had just used different ingredients. Like they could have just done a really good, like pore filling primer or something, you know, throw some, some silicones in there or something, you know, to like fill pores, you know, make it, make it blurring at least like, give me something. But it, like it was, it, the packaging was gorgeous though. I will give them credit on the packaging. You think Jacqueline ended them though? See, I don't know. Jacqueline kind of made them. Because that was when they became popular. I mean, I think when Jacqueline pulled, Jacqueline Hill, if you don't know the story, did collabs with Becca and the champagne pop highlighter went amazing. She came out with a palette, amazing. Uh, she came out with an eyeshadow palette that people were complaining of the quality. And then Jacqueline made them recall it or something. Like they had to recall it because supposedly the quality wasn't good. I don't know. Um, but I feel like that was what really made Becca take off was, was Jacqueline's promotion of them. And I think they kept trying to recreate that and it just didn't work for them. So yeah. Yeah, Victoria says they didn't need to do collabs with celebs. They needed to do with other YouTubers. That would have given them better marketing people who buy makeup. Yeah, I think that probably would have been a good idea. Like grab like friggin' Bretman Rock or somebody, you know, like, um, you know, somebody that isn't like, that's kind of universal. I feel like Bretman's somebody that's kind of universally liked. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's perspective. But, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, like somebody that's super uber popular like Jacqueline was, you know. All right, let's take a little bit of break and talk about what's on my face, and then we can keep talking about brands or we can switch topics. It'll be totally up to you. All right, on my face today, I'm going to tell you more products today. So let's start with my base because people have been asking me lately what my base is. So my base today is this is PR, Pure 4 in 1 Tinted Moisturizer, and I use the shade LP3. That's what my base is. It's a very nice light coverage. Um, it's light coverage, it's not medium like it's just a little bit and then for concealer today i'm really been i've really been loving this lately the nars creamy radiant concealer and this matches my skin tone so freaking perfectly this is uh light to vanilla is my shade and it's so perfect for my skin tone this one's perfect for my skin tone too um this one might actually you know what this one might be just a little bit yellow for me but when it's because it's so light coverage it just blends in but the creamy rating concealer really is nice uh, i do have to blend it out kind of like the shape tape i do have to make sure i blend it out with a beauty blender because it can cake up and crease if i use too much um, but i just put like like literally like this much like maybe a centimeter and a half um, of concealer and then just blend it out with my fingertips and then with the beauty blender and it's perfect. And then my face was super shiny. So I use the Peach Perfect by Too Faced. This is purchased. Oh, this is purchased. And I still use this. I still really love this. It does have that peach scent. And if you breathe as you're putting it on, you will inhale peach scent. So just be careful with that. <laughs> Uh, let's see on my eyes today. I dipped into I haven't used this in a while the magic palette by Juvia's place I don't know if they make this big one anymore or not, um, but I love this palette uh, I use this shade on in my crease and then I use this one all over my lid and then in the outer corner I use this one the names are kind of difficult to pronounce and I don't want to butcher them So I'd rather just not say them than get them wrong uh, So that's what's on my lid and then on my lower lash line is this one here And then I wanted to do something on my lower lash line, but I didn't want to use this So I actually grabbed my auric cosmetics in temper and I use this on my lower lash line in the inner corner That's kind of what you're seeing down here and I'm I'm 
it's, it's, I'm still learning how to work with this because it is a very thick formula. So especially on the lower lash line, I'm still learning how I like to work with it. I did try, I want to give you an update. I did try because this was the one that was getting hard pan. I did try to use some tape and get the hard pan off. But as soon as I put my finger back in it, it, the hard pan like can't, seems to have come back. Like it just, it's a very sheer wash of sparkle which I think is, I mean, it's a topper. It's supposed to be a sheer wash of sparkle, but that's kind of, that's two swatches. Let's do a third. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't think the hard pan is back because the hard pan, when it was on here, it was actually kind of like a, a discolored shade and it wasn't coming off at all. So there's three. It is meant to be a topper though. So you just have to kind of know what you're getting into with that. I do have a full review of these, the three shadows and then one of the glow lust. Uh, after this is over, I'll link it down below in case you're curious of my thoughts on uh, Auric Cosmetics altogether. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, and then also I topped all over my lid because I wanted a little extra glow today. This is by JD Glow. This is the Mesmerize and I don't know which shade this is, it just says Mesmerize on the bottom, but I think that that's the, I'm not sure if that's the shade name or not, um, but that's what I have tapped all over my lid that's giving it like a little bit of an iridescent glow. If you're in person, you'd probably be able to see it just a little bit more. It's absolutely beautiful, but it is a loose one. So if you don't like loose, you probably won't like it, but it's a beautiful shadow. Again, that's JD Glow. Uh, eyeliner today, I've been loving brown eyeliner lately. This is PR. This is the first thing that's been PR in a while. Yeah, everything else is purchased. This PR is the only thing so far that's PR. This is PR as well. This is the M Cosmetics uh, Illustrative Eyeliner in Brown. This is a fantastic liquid eyeliner if you're looking for a good liquid eyeliner. There are a few different brands, but this is one of them. It's fantastic. Uh, let's see. Let's do, okay, Cheeks. CoverGirl Clean Fresh Clean Cream Blush. Been loving this. The cream blushes lately, I feel like I've really been enjoying. That's what's on my cheeks today. Very easy to use. Very easy to have at a real bright pigmentation or to fade down and blend out. Really beautiful. And then uh, my highlight is the brand new. This is PR. I believe this was PR. Pretty sure. Uh, Ofra Steph Tom's collab Milk and Cookies Highlighter. I used the lighter one today. Yes. It has a very faint smell of cookies. Very faint smell of like cookie dough is what it smells like. It smells very nice, but it's not as strong as like a Too Faced smell. It doesn't come wafting out at you. You have to like really smell it. And then on my lips today, ColourPop Ultra Satin Lip in Strut. And then I, this is purchased. And then PR, yes, I had to think for a second, but yes. Uh, Essence Juicy Bomb Shiny Lip Gloss. These are brand new. These are only $1.99. We talked about this in What's Up in Makeup today. These are only $1.99. I could not believe it. They're so nice. Like, they're just a nice gloss, meaning that they're not too thick. They're not sticky at all. They don't slide all over your face. They have a nice lasting power. They have a nice scent. Like, they're really nice. Like, they're basic, but they're nice. Like, what do you need in a lip gloss, you know? <laughs> like, like, lip glosses don't have to be super expensive to be awesome. Uh, and this is uh, number six. It's called Watermelon Crush, which is kind of a strange... I don't, I don't see this as a watermelon shade, but I don't know. It smells really nice, too. Let me show you a swatch of it just so you can see what it looks like on its own. And I'm going to blend it out. That's a lot. I accidentally squeezed out too much. But, but yeah. So there is a tint to it, but then of course, the more you mush your lips together, the more it's going to fade out. See how far I can blend this. <laughs> but yeah, it's really nice. On my hand, I can feel the slightest little bit of stick, but not much. There's a little bit. I have to tell you, there is a little bit. I didn't feel it on my lips though. Maybe it was because I put it over other products the two times I've used it, but... $1.99 for reals? $1.99. Love that for us. Okay. So that's what's on my face today. All right. What? No. ColourPop Ultra Satin Lips. Why? Why? See, this is how much I keep up with ColourPop. Why? Like the Ultra Mats are so uncomfortable. Why? Why would they do that? This doesn't even make any sense. Are you serious now? Really? How long have I had this? I think this was part of a That Girl Shea XO collab, like maybe a year ago. 
You know, um, Nintendo. I love that. P64. That is very cute. Hey, Jen, how do you feel about Winky Lux products? I just tried their liquid eyeliner and cream blush, and I love the packaging. But I feel the packaging is brainwashing me. I feel the exact same way. Everything I try, I've tried from Winky Lux, which has not been a lot. <laughs> John's stealing it. <laughs> John's stealing my lip gloss. <laughs> what do you say? Oh, it's Essence. It's Essence. Essence lip gloss. Um, yeah, the, I feel I felt the same thing with with Winky Lux is that it was really they do spend a lot of time really making their products look beautiful, but the quality has been not great. The things that I've tried, um, but I have not tried a lot, so there could be things that I'm missing that are really good. Yeah, um, learn English. Thoughts on mixing foundations, disastrous or genius? Oil versus water-based, different brands. Um, I haven't had a problem with mixing foundations. I don't typically do it uh, just because it seems unnecessary for, for me personally. I can see why other people would do it, um, but I don't have a lot of experience with that. Okay, Elizabeth feels the same way about Winky Lux because I've been very tempted to buy some things from Winky Lux that just because they're beautiful, like they have that marbled lip product that's really pretty. Yeah, same thing from Holly. I love the Winky Lux on the packaging, on the package, but uh, product not the best. Yeah, see, there you go. Audra, I enjoy the bronzer for Winky Lux, but I feel like it's super expensive. Yeah. Oh, Alicia, I like your shirt. I've been loving Stella Rosa Red Apple. I get it from Target. Nice. Okay, so I did not mention my shirt. Okay, so this, if you didn't, if you, I can see why people probably didn't get it. It's, it's, okay. Herb at, at Ertlinger's Fruit Wines. Okay, if you get the reference, it is from um, Schitt's Creek is the, the reference when um, Moira gets hired for a job and she ends up, she the wine tastes terrible, but she needs the money. So she does the job and she ends up getting drunk before she does the job. And it's just some of the best acting I've ever seen. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like some of, like the way she plays real drunk. Like usually people play drunk, it's like overblown and just ridiculous, you know, like it's just, it's not, the way she plays it is so realistic. That's what got me. So this is one of my favorite scenes in all of Schitt's Creek is when she she does the commercial for the the herb at Ertlinger fruit wines. And I love how they like hate the wine, but they do it anyway. Oh, thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm going to have to check out these Stella Rose wines. I'm going to have to check them out. I do like fruit wines. We have a local uh, winery that does fruit wines. They have a really good blueberry wine that's delicious. I can't think of what, what it's called right off the top of my head. I haven't had it in a long time. But when we, whenever we do have our, um, what you call it, our Renaissance Fair, they have all of their fruit wines there, and they're actually really good. I agree. Schitt's Creek is the best. It's such a good show. Okay. Um, oh, I saw someone say that Taylor, uh, Taylor Wynn mixes foundations all the time. I think that's fantastic. She's more into foundations than I am though. Like foundations for me are more functional than they are fun. Um, and I feel like Taylor, because of her, um, the complexities with her skin that she's gone through, uh, for a long time that she's, you know, um, her skin is just a little more complex to work with. And I think that's probably why she, um, she mixes her foundations and really spends more time on it than I do. Yeah, so Lucy says, I mix ABH and YSL and I love it. Nice. Oh, it was Gigi that said Taylor Wood mixes her foundation all the time. Nice. Okay. Oh, good question. Ryan wants to know, did you end up getting any of Jacqueline's lip products? Yes, I did. I did. I was on there five minutes early, refreshed every minute on the minute, and she launched like one or two minutes after the hour. I jumped on. I grabbed the lip liner first. I grabbed one of the lip liners, and I grabbed two liquid lipsticks, and I checked out, and I was out by three minutes in. Like It literally took me like a minute to check out. And then when I went back in and I refreshed, I saw all the, li all the uh, lip liners were gone. 
So I was really thankful I got in and I did get one. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do, like, I might just do like a quick full review, like not like a detailed, but like just kind of like a swatching. So I would do, um, you know, just kind of talk about the formula of them, um, whether anything stood out, kind of ingredient analysis, basics, you know, price and all of that. And then um, just do lip swatches of the shades by themselves and then topped over the lip liner and then just like a basic thought. So maybe like a 15 to 20 minute video. I always say that, but then it ends up being 25 to 30 minutes, but <laughs> I can't imagine spending 25 to 30 minutes on two liquid lipsticks and a lip liner, but you know, but we won't go into the whole, it's just going to be a review. We won't go into the whole, like the, every, I, nobody needs me to rehash anything. <laughs> Y'all don't need me for that. <laughs> so. Oh, wow. Holly says, Jen, I moved to Berkeley Springs, West Virginia. Used to be right in Glen Burnie. Totally, Glen Burnie is a vibe on its own. <laughs> That's where I used to live. When I lived in um, the first house we bought was right near Glen Burnie uh, in a place called Brooklyn Park. And uh, that was a vibe. That was a vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Anywhere moving out of Glen Burnie is going to be a different vibe. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting place to live. Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, I don't know anything about, but I'll have to check it out. Trying to see. Um, yeah, here we go. So Darky GM says the transition from winter to summer skin tone and back again, mixing is always needed. You know what's interesting is I you like I'm not out a lot. <laughs> Like, especially now, like I go out for walks in my neighborhood. So what I what I've been doing is I've been using a sunscreen first thing in the morning. And then like if I go out, I'm only out. You know, if I'm out, I'm taking a walk around the neighborhood, which is like, you know, 30, 45 minutes max, unless I end up talking to a neighbor and then it can be like an hour and a half. But, <laughs> but, you know, standing, you know, I'm not really out a whole lot. And then like going to the store and back. So I haven't been getting a lot of sun uh, because I've been using a lot of um, sunscreen and really trying to be good about that. So I haven't really had that um, be a thing, but I, I have been there. I have been there, especially when I was commuting to and from work every day, like definitely. And then being outside at recess and everything. Yeah. And getting that shade better and perfect. Totally. Yes. Oh my gosh. As far as the Jacqueline Cosmetics, Allie Glines did an amazing lip swatch video. Like her poor lips, I would imagine were hurting for days, at least a day after that. Like all of the lip, she swatched every liquid lipstick and every lip liner. And she did some lip combos with the liquid lipstick and the lip liner. Like I, I would not have done that. I would have stopped at the swatches of the liquid lipstick and the lip liner. I cannot even imagine by the time she got to those lip combos, what her lips felt like. Just fire, fire. She did an incredible job. All right, favorite eye primers. All right, let me get a few. Hold, please. Hold on, I can't find the drawer cosmetics one. Okay, hold on. Okay, I have so many favorite eye primers. Okay. Let's get out all my favorite eye primers. There's so many of them. Okay, I'll try to go fast though. Okay, Gerard Cosmetics. We're going to have positive and negatives of each one. So Gerard Cosmetics, very full coverage. Lots of beautiful shades. You need the tiniest, tiniest little bit. Teeniest, tiniest little bit of this, but very nice. Works great. All of these work great, making your eyeshadow last longer, not crease, all of that stuff. All the good things, but they're a little quirky each one. Okay, the Ofra. No pigmentation on this. Zero pigmentation, but does work very well. It's also got a slip to it. So, wait, okay. PR, PR. Okay. It's got a little bit of a slip to it. So, if you don't like that, you're probably not going to like this one. But I do like it. You just got to make sure you blend it out so that it doesn't have that slip as much and your eyeshadows really adhere to it. Makeup by Mario. PR. This is the light one. Love this. I use both of these shades. I do not use the powder. I just find that it doesn't really do anything for me, but I know a lot of people like to set their eyeshadow primer. I don't really do that. Maybe I need to, um, but you know, 
I really love this one. Uh, Jason Wu purchased this. I did a full review on this brand. Really love this. There is some pigmentation to this. Again, just a tiny bit, but this one isn't as thick as the Gerard Cosmetics. The Gerard Cosmetics one um, definitely packs more of a punch as far as the pigmentation, but this does have some pigmentation to it. Uh, and there, I do believe there are quite a few shades of this. And then another one, uh, this one only has one shade. This is the Ulta Matte Eye Primer in Nude hate that name. Um, but uh, this one's really good too. This is kind of an oldie, but a goodie. Uh, and it does have some pigmentation, but it's it's probably similar to the Jason Wu as far as the pigmentation, but this one's easier to work with because you can just put on a regular amount, like a normal amount. And of course, Urban Decay. I mean, I didn't even get the Urban Decay out because everybody knows Urban Decay Primer Potion. So there you go. That's my answer. I never use the P. Louise I'm not, I'm not a fan of how she presents herself publicly. Um, so there's just so many other choices. So I, I never tried the P. Louise. Oh, Stacy, thank you. I'm Stacy. Brittany, thank you so much. Did I miss it? Oh, there it is. I see it. I see it, Brittany. Hold on. Let's see if I can find it. There you are. Thank you, Brittany. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for saying something because I did miss it. Yeah, Sandra says, I feel like every eye primer works the same for me. I've never tried one that didn't work. Yeah, I'm trying to think of ones that I've tried that that haven't worked. Um, I feel like some of them, I'm trying to think. It's been a while because I like I have so many that I like. It's been a while since I've tried one that I didn't like. That's a good point. <laughs> I'm trying to think of one that I don't like, Sandra, and I can't think of one. I mean, there's got to be one. There's got to be one. All right. Favorite affordable eyeliners and color for brown eyes. Um, are you talking about pencil liners or pen liners? Because I think there's a difference there. For pen liner, well, I think for brown eyes, I think purple look beautiful on brown eyes. I think brown looks beautiful on brown eyes. I think black. I think green. I really like my ColourPop one. I think it's sold out right now, but the Robbie Christie one called Spare Time. Love that freaking liner. This one. Oh, gosh. This one. This shade, I, I just... Like, really? It's this beautiful forest green, but it's not so dark. Like, it's got enough depth that it doesn't look, like, bright. But it it's it looks green. It doesn't look black. It's it's not so deep that it looks black. It looks green and it's beautiful. It's creamy and it's amazing. And I love it so much. But as far as liquid eyeliners, um, M Cosmetics, like we talked about earlier, the O for one, um, the the um KVD Beauty, <laughs> the tattoo one is always a classic. Uh and what other ones? Well, I'm a beauty. That one's amazing. That one died on me because I used it so much. I don't have that one anymore. I don't have my Ofra anymore because I use it up. And then I gave my daughter the other ones. Yeah, spare time. It's such a good liner. Hopefully they restock it soon. They should. And they have their own lab. Make more. Just make more. What? Yeah, recommend an eyeliner for the waterline. All the ones I've used make my eyes water and then they disappear. I really like the ColourPop ones. Um, I don't use a lot of lower lash line eyeliner. I usually use eyeshadow as my lower lash line liner like I did today. Um, but I really do like the ColourPop ones. Yeah, Joy says blue looks good on brown eyes. I agree. I agree. Yeah, see the Nick Genie, the Nyx Epic Ink. I used to really like that one, and then it started being a little weird, a little smudgy on me, and I don't know what happened with that. I am thinking about getting the Tetris, the Nyx Tetris collection with the just the liners, not the big eighty pan eyeshadow palette. I don't need that in my life. Like I don't, uh, that's too much. I'm not doing that. But the the liner thing, um, I think it's thirty bucks, and you get like five liners or something like that, just to have fun because there's like white in there. I don't know. I think it would be fun. Like maybe like layer it up. So like put like the white down and then put like a brown over top so that it's got like a strip of white and then like brown. Like I think that would be pretty. I don't know. 
Yeah, um, Emily says the Physicians Formula Liquid Liner in black or brown is super nice. I don't like the regular one, but I do like the waterproof one. I found that the regular one, it wasn't like, I don't know if I got a bad one or whatever, but it wasn't very opaque. It was a little watery. I don't know what happened, but the waterproof one worked great for me. So I don't know if I just got a bad one or what, because I know a lot of people love that one. Teresa's Dead, one of my favorite channels, loves the lethal potted liners for the waterline. She has sensitive, watery eyes. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. And then Julia says, Jessica Braun recommended the L'Oreal L Liner Signature for waterline and does not transfer great. Thank you so much, Julia. And then Pam says, Nude Sticks Matte Ones are great for the waterline. This is what the collective brain is all about. I do not like the Urban Decay ones for lower lash line. They, they run and smudge and it's awful. Do not like them. Gigi says, Mark Jacobs eyeliner is the OG for staying in place. Nice. I think I had a sample of that once, but it was a long time ago, and I just don't remember. Yeah, I, Janice, I don't like the Urban Decay for the waterline because it's it runs on me. I mean, it's been a couple of years since I've used it, but I did not, did not. All right. So let's talk about another brand because we, we should. We should talk about another brand. Um, let's talk about Anastasia Beverly Hills because we haven't talked about them yet and they're a good one to talk about. Let's get some coffee real quick. And we only have five minutes left, so this will be our last brand. Just very quickly. So ABH, I feel like, um, hmm, I don't like their liquid lipsticks. I know a lot of people do, but I, they're too dry for me. I don't like them. Uh, it's probably my least favorite product by them, but honestly, like I really like a lot of their products. I do. I really do. Uh, the subculture palette, I was not a fan of. I did do a full review of that back in the day. Uh, I know some people loved it, and there was a reformulation of that that I think people liked better than the original. I just have the original. was not a fan. Uh, favorite products from them, uh, I love their new palettes. I love the, um, the Amrezy palette. I love the Jackie Ina palette. I love the Soft Glam palette. I love the Sultry palette. I love the new um, the new lip gloss. It smells like peaches, and it's it's very thick. Uh, the clear one, very thick, very beautiful though. Really gives a gorgeous, gorgeous shine. But it is a thicker formula, uh, not sticky, just thick. So imagine like a Mac lip gloss, but without the stickiness. That's what the ABH one is. I really like that. I actually really like the new diamond highlighter too. I know a lot of people didn't like it. They said it was glittery. I don't know. I didn't find it to be glittery, but it is does have a gold tint to it. So if you don't like gold, you're not going to like it. Uh, but I do really like it. The Amrezy highlighter. Yes, Christine. The Amrezy highlighter is just, they need to bring that back. I think one day they will. They should. They should. Yes, Elizabeth, I love the ABH Myco Brow Pen and Brow Freeze. I have not tried those. I do like the original um, ABH Brow Pencil. Love that a lot. Yeah, the Sultry Palette, uh, Catherine, I believe is uh, discontinued. I believe it's discontinued. Makes me sad. Say, thank you. That's so nice of you. Thank you, Say. I appreciate you. That was nice. Melissa says, I miss ABH Lash Genius. Made any water mascara waterproof. Nice. I never tried that. That's cool. Yeah, marvelous. The Jackie Ida palette is bomb. Andrea Matiliano loves it too. Yes, it is really good. I mean, it's just... If you're scared of using color because you're used to using, you know, all neutral, natural, like, colors, the Jackie Ina palette is a great way to bring color in, like, one at a time. Or if you really like loud, bold, bright colors, it's great for that, too. It's just a fantastic palette. It's just well done, you know? And the shades are different. There's definitely some very unique, different shades in there. It's beautiful. Jackie did a fantastic job on that palette. Oh, Riviera. Yeah, Riviera is a fun palette, too. I haven't used that in forever. I kind of forgot about it. It's such a great palette, though. Totally. Totally. So, yeah. That's how I feel about ABH. I mean, honestly, like, I've liked probably 80% of the things I've tried from ABH just as, like, a subjective number that I'm just throwing up into the air. Yeah. Spanchy Muse. ABH needs to bring back the Mario eyeshadow palette. Yes, in their new formula. <laughs> In their new formula, I had someone gift me the original Mario palette. 
uh, and it's not the same formula, the original one, as what they're making now. I just realized my sleep's been probably up the whole time. All right, final thoughts, my friends. Final thoughts. It's almost time to go. Final thoughts. Sarah wants to know what is on my eyes. In the middle point, I went over all what's on my eyes. It's usually around the 30-minute mark. So as soon as this renders, um, just click back, and it's all there for you. I only have one minute left, though. All right. Hi there. Welcome back. I've never tried their shadows or anything else other than their brow powder and micro pencil that I love. I feel the ABH formula isn't for me. Lorac is my favorite for context. That's so interesting because Lorac and ABH actually have very similar formulas in that they kick up a lot of powder. You know what I'm talking about? How when you dip into a Lorac shadow, it kicks up some powder. ABH does the same thing. I think if, if you would said what formula is closest to ABH, I would say Lorac. It's, that's so interesting to me. That's so interesting. May, but don't, not the Norvina ones. I'm not talking about those. I haven't even tried the Norvina ones, but like the regular, like ABH ones. They're very similar, very pigmented. Sometimes a little difficult to blend because they are so pigmented. Um, I think Lorac has them on that though, because sometimes the ABHs are hard to blend because there's just so much pigment. They're so intense. All right, I should go. Oh, I'm, I'm going to miss you this week. I haven't seen you guys in a week and now it's going to be a whole nother week. I got to figure out what I'm going to film this week. I don't even know what I'm going to film this week. I have a bunch of things I want to film. It's just picking because I'm excited about so many things. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. Thank you so much for being here in live chat. I hope you had fun. I hope that you enjoyed. If you are watching on the replay, make sure you leave your thoughts down in the comments. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button and you've enjoyed the chat, it really helps me a lot to just click that button. Uh, if you didn't enjoy it, that's okay, too. You don't have to click it. It's no problem. If you want to hit the thumbs down, that's engagement, too. So, you know. <laughs> It's up to you, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Uh, and if you're not already subscribed, you can subscribe before you head out. Um, and yeah, we'll be back next week for another chat. Thank you for being here. And yeah, I'll see you next week. Mad love. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye.